fast cash will help you sell your property quickly. These are the type of communications I get each and every day at my probate law firm. Hi, I'm Darren Finling from The Probate Pro, and I find it really interesting that the web is filled with realtors and brokers telling you how to get rich off of probate properties. But there hasn't been many, if any, probate practitioners who can give you insights on how to work with probate lawyers as it relates to probate property. My law firm is a multi-state probate law firm. We operate uh, in Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, and Florida and provide a national network of probate coordination. So we really understand this space and I happen to be a licensed real estate broker. So what are the insights? What are the tricks of the trade? Are blasting lawyers with spam emails the, the key to getting listings? I don't think so. I think that the, first let's understand really what's going on in probate and it may provide some insight as to how this process works. So the probate process is really a procedural process of allowing somebody's assets and their liabilities to be orderly managed after somebody dies. And often included in that is real estate. Sometimes the real estate is in really healthy situation. There's no mortgage, no tax uh, payments or foreclosures pending. And sometimes it's at high risk uh, in need of a fire sale or a quick liquidation. So when an estate is open, often, depending on the jurisdiction, there are restrictions that may exist in the personal representative's authority to be able to sell the real estate. And there may even need to be a petition filed before a piece of real estate can be sold. So what typically happens is that the realtors are reviewing the um, publication notices, the publication for creditors that the personal representative is responsible to list in the legal news to identify any unknown creditors. Realtors use these lists to identify the opening of new probate estates. So every time we publish in the legal news, we get a blast from realtors asking us if we'd be interested in liquidating a piece of real estate on an estate upon which we're either the personal representative or we're representing the personal representative. Those email blasts, I'm sorry, those blasts occur in email or in written form and often we get direct phone calls asking us about it. Now from my perspective, it's simply noise. We disregard or have spam filters to filter out those emails. And with the letters, they simply go right into the recycle bin. We do not get impacted by any of those communications. So if you're one of those, you can just stop wasting your uh, stamps on our law firm. How do you penetrate though? How do you get noticed such that a probate practitioner can uh, will use you? Well, it's not the email blast and it's not the um, uh, mailings that are gonna do it. It's developing connections and relations such that that lawyer can understand that you as a realtor have the experience and know-how to be able to liquidate a piece of real estate in a trust, trusting fashion. So we tend to like to work with realtors who will list our multi-million dollar uh, real estate uh, assets and our um, fire sale assets. They know how to uh, work with sophisticated sellers and often non-sophisticated sellers. Sellers that have to move quickly so that they've got a full range of uh, investors that may be able to purchase quickly for cash as well as uh, properties that may have to be listed on the market for a long period of time. So we want to understand their expertise. We want to know what area they focus in. Are they a urban area or uh, out in the country? Can they handle the big, the small? We want somebody that can do it all for us because it makes it a lot easier for us every time somebody comes into our office uh, that we are not finding different realtors based on the circumstances. We can hand our inventory over each time somebody uh, comes in and know that they're gonna be treated with a high level of 
attention to the detail in the same way that our law firm requires all of our vendors and everyone that we refer to to operate within our core values and to deliver an extraordinary legal experience. We want an extraordinary real estate experience to occur. And we don't want any of our clients that we refer out to then call us and say the realtor isn't doing a great job. So what, what happens here? Well, first, we want to establish a personal connection and relationship with the realtor. We want to know their skill set and that they're out hustling. They're, they're the hard-working, hard-driving realtors. The only way you can do that is to develop a connection through some uh, opportunity face-to-face. -face. So the letters and the spam do nothing to establish that level of trust. We want people that have proven themselves over time, and we want a stable of people. So for example, at my law firm, we don't just have one realtor that we turn to. We have a stable um, of them that, depending on the circumstances, we would refer out or we would give the clients um, an opportunity to interview a few people so that they could feel most comfortable handling the particular real estate. So in this progression of the timeline from the beginning of the estate, all the way through the uh, time of sale. Most realtors are looking for people in a fire sale situation. That's why they're kind of spamming us at the beginning and commencement. They want to be first in. The reality is I get a boatload of emails and mail that all happen at the same time. So you're really not standing out from the crowd. You're simply one of many that are involved. So what could you do? Well, one is to actually get to the attorney or the personal representative even earlier than the publication. Let's understand what that means. When a matter is filed, there is a period of time between the filing and the appointment of the personal representative. And it doesn't mean that they're always publishing at the beginning. So often publication doesn't occur at the onset of the probate administration. So if you wanted to get in early, earlier than all the other noise, I would suggest reviewing the public record at the probate court and identifying when an estate is open. You can really learn a lot about the estate itself by pouring through it. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, but it may give you a foot in the door to be able to have a meaningful conversation about the estate that's about to be administered. Now, what are the things that I want to hear when I speak to a realtor? I want to understand that they're not um, just very narrowly focused on a particular set of circumstances, but they're going to be able to help me in each type of probate administration that we may be involved in. Now, I also do recognize that the, the quick cash purchasers, if it lands on a personal representative or an attorney's desk, at the precise moment when they need to liquidate because of a mortgage foreclosure or because of a tax forfeiture or some other pressures that create a fire sale situation, your timing may be right. But I really look at that as just simply luck. It's, it's like your email just happened to hit at the right exact moment. I think that the right strategy here is to develop relationships with uh, probate attorneys who do this regularly public administrators, professional personal representatives, law firms that commit themselves to doing this probate work over and over again. Build a trusting relationship with a probate attorney so that they know they can count on you when an, a property is ready for sale. I think it's as simple as the things you learned when you were in kindergarten. And, and what I mean by that is there's no magic, there's no secret sauce to be able to garner the relationship with that personal injury attorney. It's calling the person back quickly, answering the phone when the call is made or immediately responding to the text or the email. It's these types of things that we look for to know that when that person is needed, they're gonna be on the spot ready to respond and I'm not going to have to worry or look over my shoulder and hope that the realtor is gonna be doing their job. It's the basics, treating people respectfully um, and making sure that they are always advocating and doing the best work relative to that piece of real estate. It's as simple as that. And that is the magic sauce from a probate practitioner that is in multi-states. It's not the spam. It's not the letters that are going to get you 
that relationship. It's being a good businessman and a good human being. I'm Darren Finling of The Probate Pro. If you want to discuss these issues with me, give us a call, 833-PROBATE, or visit us at theprobatepro.com.